Hello everyone, how's it going? Elliot here again. In today's video, we are finally going to be installing the Ben Venn Freckle Shack Backlit Game Boy Color Kit Drop-In Replacement Future. Oh my god. Uh, so basically, what you're going to need for this is the um, glass screen lens from Jelly Belly Customs, if that actually uh, focuses. Um, if you've already got a bunch of glass screen lenses from Bluish Squirrel, uh, that is going to work fine. Um, it worked fine on my McWill one. I didn't I didn't use a bespoke screen for that. Uh, but if you're wanting to create something that's going to be absolutely perfect, obviously go over to Jelly Belly Customs and get their screen. So that's made out of glass. Um, ben also included in the kit a, um, a sticker which says Game Boy Color Light on it. We'll check out that at the end. Obviously, you're going to need a Freckle Shack. The links to all of this stuff is going to be in the description. And uh, none of this stuff has been sponsored, but all of it was sent to me for free. So big thank you to Jelly Belly Customs, big thank you to Ben, and uh, yeah, okay. Also a big thank you to John, he bought me this uh, fake uh, Pokemon Game Boy Color many, many years ago. It was like my first viral video. So it's gonna have a bit more limelight and we're gonna use that for the mod. And uh, yeah, it's actually the only spare Game Boy I have at the moment. So the last thing we need to look at is the uh, shell and now that was sent to me by Rob from Raw Talent Art. Thank you very much Rob um, He's put a card on the package with his details on it. So let's go ahead and check out that So Rob reached out to me and said would you like me to send you a custom? Uh, shell and I said too right and he's done just that and it's arrived today This is the last thing we've been waiting on if you ever want to send me anything to my PO box uh, the PO box address is always in the description, but that's it there as well if you want it so here it is. Okay, I'm very excited. Um, Rob does some cool stuff. I mean, he's he's obviously some sort of like professional painter. So here it is. I'm pretty damn excited. Wow. Wow. Oh man, that is cool. Am I capturing that on camera? And then on the back, it's exactly the same. That is damn crazy, and it looks so, so high quality. Like, it's got this insane glossy finish to it. And, uh, yeah, because it was a clear Game Boy that he, that he did this on, the uh, battery cover window is actually clear. So we're going to be able to see our batteries when they're in there. So that is some cool, cool stuff. Uh, here's his little uh, card in the middle there. So Rob Allen Wallington. Big thank you to you, my friend. Um, I'll leave his links in the description as well. So... The final thing for us to do is just put it together. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly show you me doing that. It's a very, very simple process. Obviously, it's a drop-in kit, so shouldn't need a lot of work. Let's crack on. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the six tri-wing screws from the outside of the shell. Obviously, I'm swapping over some components, so whether or not you're doing the same, some of this might not apply to you. I then remove the metal shield from the back of the fake Pokemon shell, ready to transfer over to our better new shell. After that, remove the three Phillips screws and undo the ribbon cable. Then take your Freckle Shack kit and remove the contents. Place the green PCB into the screen slot and that's gonna show us where we're gonna need to cut some of the plastic. I recommend heating up the knife to make this process a heck of a lot easier. Next up, we're gonna to need to remove that middle bit. You can either snap it off with a bit of force, but I chose to just take some wire cutters and just cut the inside out. The PCB then fits in very, very snug. Remove the sticker and the two little 3D printed spaces, which we're gonna to need to place in next to the screen. That lines everything up. Pop the ribbon cable in and cover the back of the screen up with some Kapton tape. Put your buttons back in and we're pretty much ready to close up the console. Put your three Phillips screws back in, slot the ribbon cable in and do up the metal shield. Slide the back on and if you've done it well, it should all close up quite nicely. I had a little bit of pressure under mine that I took it apart again and removed. I put the battery contacts in, chuck some batteries in and we're pretty much ready to do the finishing touches. Thank you. 
Well, that was scarily easy to upgrade a Game Boy from something so mediocre and average to something so absolutely beautiful and gorgeous. I am so, so happy with how this has turned out. Um, such a huge thank you to Rob for this incredible shell. Um, he's used some really, really crazy paints on this thing. Um, so you can see it has some mad effects. And obviously, um, another thing that he's done as well. Oh, I just noticed there's a little bit of a chip in it. Maybe that's why he gave it to me. It's because it's broken. I'm joking, it's fine. Um, but I think I think this turned out really, really well. And obviously, he's used um, like a proper spray brush paint thing and spread it instead of just a can um, because there's no way you can get lacquer this good um, with a can of paint. So really, really cool. He's also done like a highlight around the Nintendo logo and the start and select and um, just a few little bits of detail here and there. Looks amazing. So... I'm very, very lucky to have both of these awesome Game Boys sat here. We've got the Mukwil one on the left and the Ben Ven one on the right. I'm going to be doing a proper comparison video very soon. Um, it'll be when I get back from Play Expo Manchester, which was happening this weekend. Um, and yeah, so quickly, let me just show you a couple of immediate differences. If I turn both of them on, you will notice that the Ben Ven screen is dimmer. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Oh. Also notice that the game froze. Oh no, okay, it's fine. Um, I am playing a, uh, a fake multi-cart to be fair, but that's because I don't have two copies of Super Mario Land 2. I'm using the recently refurbished one that I made, uh, but I just want to sort of show you these immediate differences that you can see in the screens. So there's been a lot of reports that the Mukwil um, battery life uh, is a lot lower than in the uh, Ben Ven one. Now, I don't doubt that because um, obviously look at the brightness. I'm gonna do a little bit of testing over the next few days and then I'm gonna come back with a conclusion which will hopefully uh, sum up which one you should go for. In terms of price, they're very, very, very similar. Um, Mukwil is obviously a European individual and uh, Ben is out in Australia. So he's covering sort of different areas of the, uh, the world, but both of them have worldwide shipping. So it is gonna be a case of which one is better than the other, really, and it's going to come down to that. So I'm quite excited to just get this uh, this comparison video out. Um, but, I mean, briefly, I can just show you the uh, the screen quality of this is absolutely, you know, exceptional. It, it really, really is um, a gorgeous, gorgeous looking device. Um, the screen quality and resolution is exactly the same as the McWill one. Um, if you haven't seen that video, definitely go and check it out. But, I mean, if you're looking for a way to play a Game Boy Color game, this is it. Absolutely exceptional. There's no ghosting. It's got a thing called a transflective display, which basically means that if whether whether or not you're inside or out, um, it's going to be a very very nice screen because when you go outside, it reflects light, uh, and when you're inside, obviously, it's got a backlight emitting the light, um, and you can see the uh, the sort of grey reflective screen. Um, obviously, one of the sort of standout points of an AGS 101 is a distinguishable black screen, uh, but if you play an AGS 101 outside. Uh, you're going to need a torch to see the screen because it is a, a very, very dim screen. And that's what was previously being used for the Game Boy Color backlight mods. I really hope you've all enjoyed this video. A big, big thank you to Jelly Belly Customs, Ben Ven and uh, Rob for making this happen. And for all of you guys for watching, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. Emily, should they subscribe? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Catch you guys in the next video. Peace.